What is good? We're back. We just hit a little two round mock. So if you didn't watch that video, go check that out. And then we can, you can come back over here and uh, get into this discussion. I think we're mostly going to pick up in the second round here. I think everybody feels fairly comfortable about most of the guys who are going in the first round at this point. The draft could shake the back end of it up, but I'm not sure if it'll change much of the first half. Um, so let's get into, uh, you know, the second part of this draft here. Um, and I want to start. I do want I want to start with Jalen Hyatt at, at, at two four. Um, is, is anybody anybody dislike that pick? <laughs> just just Matt. That's your boy. Look at he's heartbroken. <laughs> what are we drafting a fucking track team? <laughs> he that didn't run. He only ran run? a four four. That can't Matt. run. Listen, we're we're going full speed over here in the Bauer household. All right. Oh, no. <laughs> what are the What do you like about him? What 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 was it was. It's got to be the the analytics how, here, right? How high up would you have taken him? Uh, 201-ish. Okay. All right. Can I can I just run through a list of of some things here that I like? Sure. Okay. Ooh. Early declare. Mitch, put your watch away. It's not going to take that long. Early <laughs> declare. Uh, maximum receiving yards per team pass attempt of 3.01. That's in the upper echelon over 80th percentile. The guy gets open. Contested target percentage in his final year of 5.62%. We want to see anything under 28%. Definitely clears that. We, who we would we have, have liked. On, that there was no contested catches like his last uh, year? I think it on was a deep threat on deep passes, maybe? Yeah, something uh, versus I, man. I believe versus, that. I think it might have been versus man on deep passes. Football FB Insights, great follow on Twitter. On uh, good, good, great, good does a lot of good graph work, uh, but yeah, some some crazy stat like that. So that five percent is for overall in general. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. Final season. Uh, we'd like to have seen him run a little bit faster. I think that was the expectation. Mm -hmm. But hey, who who am I to scoff at a four four? Right. right. We're knocking the it, dude for running a four four. That shit's wild to me. Continue. Uh, you know, but you look at it as his speed and. Is six foot, 176 pounds with his height adjusted speed score. It's still over guys like Devontae Smith, Jahan Dotson, those skinny receivers that got first round draft capital, and we see how they're performing. I want to go through something really quick for you guys. All right. Lance Zerline, NFL.com. Mm. He goes through, he goes through his pros and cons for the draft profile. I want to read two different guys here for you. One of them is Jalen Hyatt. And then I'll let you know who the other guy is here in a minute, okay? Jalen yeah. Hyatt. These are all cons. Scheme created a variety of free releases for him. The other player, Scheme provided a lot of room for free play. Jalen Hyatt. Lean frame, lacking in play strength. The other guy, lack of desired play strength could become a concern. Jalen Hyatt. Unsuccessful holding ground when catch is contested. The other guy, Average hand strength to finish the catch. The other guy that you would think is absolute shit is Chris Olave, and he looks pretty damn good out there. Am I saying Jalen High is Chris Olave? No, I think Chris Olave is without a doubt a better prospect. But the cons that you're going to be hearing throughout this entire draft process, not just for Jalen Hyatt, but for a lot of guys, go back and look at what these people were saying previously about these, these prospects and the concerns they have. And I think Lance Zerline, fantastic for what he does. He's got so but many I, different ways of saying the same shit. Good. For, that's, but but appa I, apparently I, not really. It, he said the same thing. Well, about that's what I was, I, that, was the, that was the point I was going to make was if you've been doing this for any amount of time, there's only so much shit you can say. So some right. of that has to be, you know, you could be anyway, saying the same continue. thing, but he verbaged it differently. I also have it's like those. Yeah. It's like those Mad Libs. You have the sentence and just throw a few adjectives in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you could sit there and say the size is a concern. The BMI is low. It's like the second percentile. It's super low. And you could also say that he really didn't perform until Cedric Tillman was banged up and he was out. But that gave him the opportunity to perform and, and the be the off. guy. Be the guy in that offense and he's going to make, he's going to get head and hooker, a nice little contract here, bumping him up. I mean, we're seeing mocks now where head and hooker is going in the first round of the NFL yeah. draft. I think I you can that. pencil it in. I we'll, saw that we'll, today. We'll, we'll pivot to that in a minute. <clears throat> you know, so the way, the way that I said, Jordan Addison made Kenny Pickett a lot of money 
Jalen Hyde is one of the main reasons to to boost Hendon Hooker. So I think, yes, there is the bust potential, but if I'm sitting there at 204, early, mid-second round, load me up on Jalen Hyatt, baby. Come on, I'm jacked. Mitch, what do you got? You're over there. You no, know, it's just like... J- Jalen Hyatt's pretty good, right? But Hedden Hooker was a good prospect before this year started. Well, when he was 35 years old as a junior. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's good. He's, he's still he going for AR. Score. Oh, get out. Come on. <laughs> this is. It's Come on. Happen. I, I would say completely different uh, schemed open between Hyatt and, and Olave. Uh, one is a tactician, the other one is a straight line runner. And, and did have a ton of free releases. I, I think I think the way that I was, I still like Chris Olave last year because of his tactician-ness or however you would say that, um, you know, but I, I was, I was viewing, I was, I, I was wrong in the fact that I thought that, that Olave would be more lucrative and productive for an act for his actual NFL team than he would for fantasy, which was kind of, I, I think, I'm, I would double down on that with Hyatt. I think he will be just fine, um, and I. But I think he he's going to provide something awesome for an NFL team and have those pop games. But I, I'm I'm not sure week to week how much I'm going to love him in my lineup. It would be my main concern. But I mean, at the, in the second round, it's time to take those those gambles, and there's not a, a much of a worse gamble to take. You know, if you, if, if if that's what you're into. Consistency very well may be an issue for him, but he's going to provide those weeks. He might have some duds in your lineup, but he's going to provide those boom weeks that could potentially win it for you. Uh, anybody have any other discourse on Hyatt? Yeah, where's no, his they, route they tree? All where's him. his route tree? Hey, hey, go. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he's a slower version of John Ross. Uh, uh, I mean, who's not? But Yeah, yeah. Uh, JB doesn't think, like that one. I think he's faster... Then his forty time. Oop. He's uh, click the button. He's uh, I don't. Well, don't I touch don't. my mouse. <laughs> I don't like. Don't him. touch my things. If 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 we can all sit here and say that maybe like Jordan Addison's faster than his score that he ran, and other other it, players, it has are. nothing to do with the speed Quint, score. Quint, I, my, I had him where I had him at before I before the combine. He's clearly very fast. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. I'm not saying he's not fast, but but we're we're talking about two oh four here, Matt. Uh, it's fine. I did, I just I would rather have the I would rather have Mims and Boutte over Hyatt. Eat it oh, for me. Oh, wow! Yeah, I'd, I'd you rather, and I you, give me fucking you and I give me see, fucking Tillman over Hyatt. We used to see eye to eye, but you've changed over the years, man. <laughs> <laughs> he has changed. He has. Hey, before we go any further, let me JB g- give me uh give me your rundown on where I can find you and all that stuff. Let me give you a proper round of introductions here. People like it when I mean, you get going. So. After that analysis on Hyatt, maybe nobody wants to follow me. But at the Bauer Club on Twitter, uh, one of the hosts with my guy Mitch up there uh, on Dynasty Theory, at Dynasty Theory FF. We have the Patreon, the Discord, the YouTube channel. A lot of stuff going on right now. working behind the scenes on our 2023 projections, laying the groundwork so we can start putting everybody in, pumping that out. Uh, A lot of exciting stuff going on. Nice. And Mitch, where's your Twitter handle at? Just at Dino MC, but pretty much John does everything, and I just like like a couple things or quote tweet on Twitter. That's about all I do on there anymore. <laughs> and uh, and Terrence, how about you? Where can we find your content, and and what's the Twitter handle? Yeah, my content is on YouTube, that Fantasy Network, and my Twitter handle is that the number one fantasy guy. And I'm always spitting out some hot takes or just whatever random thoughts come to mind. And I, I don't mind getting into it in the Twitter street. <laughs> nice. So, you know, you want to debate, let's get it. Oh, I hate right. that shit. I can't. <laughs> I can't do oh, it. Oh, Lord, do I hate I it. I can't do it. Oh, the dumbest I'm people. I'm just getting into it, to be honest with you. Don't follow me on Twitter. The dumbest people be on Twitter. So Twitter's let, the worst. Let's get, <laughs> let's get some conversation going on Mims here. What was your what was the thought process there? Why why do you like Mims uh, so much, Terrence? And then I don't know how the rest of the room feels. Uh, I mean, hey, I love this tape. Um, Yak gets open, track the ball well. Uh, high yards per catch. Young breakout age early declare. I mean, what's not to like? And 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 he do special teams, so he's he's gonna have he's a a, a team is gonna love him. Yeah, I. I 
I haven't watched the tape yet, to be honest with you on Mims. I haven't gotten down there. I mean, I've seen him play, uh, but we had the FB Insights guy on, and he was saying he ranks up there when, in, I forget what first it was. First downs? Like, yeah, f- plays for first downs, basically. And, and like, the, the number of lists of stratosphere guys that he was in there were guys like, you know, Jefferson and uh, Devonta Smith and Waddle. And, like, he the, the F, r- really good insight there and really had a couple of those standout stats that seemed to have – uh, kind of, you know, had a nice grouping of guys who have been successful at the next level, and he Mims was name was in a lot of those charts. Oh, 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 one thing I'm gonna say about that is, don't forget he ran a four three eight. That helps a lot. I just need the draft capital for this guy to get the draft capital, and I'm gonna be all over him. But about that chart you were saying, oh, you remember my YouTube comment? Mm-hmm. Oh, Zay Flowers wasn't looking good on them charts. No, he wasn't. wasn't great on wasn't great on all those. Listen, charts. I'll use the chart when it makes my argument, and you can get the get rid of the chart when it doesn't apply to my argument. Okay, <laughs> I'll just put it in in fucking. Uh, I'll put some Photoshop. different. I'll put it in Photoshop, and I'll move his name around. It's well, fine. hey, hey, no, no, we're keeping it one hundred. Okay, it's got to be a hundo over here. Like the analytical guys aren't keeping it one hundred. They're, they're not they're, photoshopping they're, shit. They're, they're, they might be changing the their delta skewing. or whatever the n is, but they're, they're not fucking Casey, photoshopping. Casey's like, Zay, Casey's like Zay Flowers had a five hundred percent target share last year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, unreal. Yeah, look at this. Wow, the graphic says it. No, you can't be photoshopping. Shit. Shit, come on! Now. But this, this are you planning on running for Congress in New York as well, too? Jesus, Santos! No, it's, it's yeah, kind of different than skewing numbers and then saying where he is and where he isn't. This really isn't. You're it just, really listen, is. There really listen, is. Though, if you want to skew some numbers and change fun. like the fucking, just keep changing filters till it fits your narrative. It's the well, same that's thing. Different than just it's not lying. Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, it's basically lying. It's basically it's, lying. But it's not. It's basically lying. Um, oh, you sound like my wife. It's really the same damn thing. Um, it's not what you said. It's how you said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so what this is we, what you said. Anybody have any negative or positive opinion on Mims? Like, dislike the pick at 2-6. I like the pick. Same. I love the pick there at 2-6. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, Terrence, I think in the chat you said you have him at wide receiver six. I have him at wide receiver seven right now. So, like, we're splitting hairs at that point. Interesting. I I, I haven't – I don't know if – it seems like Mims has been a late climber here into a lot of uh, talking points. It seemed like he was going to be an end of, the, end of the second round guy. Maybe if he gets the capital, it seems like maybe he could jump up even a little higher for some people. Uh, is, there, is there a way for him to jump up any of your wide receiver – charts there i think he goes in the third uh, of the nfl draft if somehow he would slip to the end of the second i think that's a big win all right i agree does oh, the, that's rare you're you agree with me now <laughs> does the, well, well when you say things that that when you say things that are true <laughs> i tend to agree with you does the the end of the second draft capital does that how, how much does that weigh into your model there jb of of, of moving him up uh, let me see here. I'm always hiding columns. I mean, you guys have seen this. Shit. I know, man. I'm trying to see them columns. I want to see the formulas and shit, but not hiding me. things. I mean, I hide <laughs> things. <laughs> hey, hey, you're, you're photoshopping <laughs> stuff. Why can't I hide well, stuff? That's what I'm saying. You got, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, We're not Sean Moore can get into the second round. He better get into the second <laughs> round. That's no, how I feel. It only takes no, one I'll, team, I'll, baby. It only takes one team to fall in love, you know? So, so honestly, I the I, I say end of the second. End of the second, third, really no difference. Um, I, I've noticed that right around that 40th overall pick, then you start to see, uh, you know, a, a, a slight change in overall hit rates. So I don't think – He's going to sniff that, but it's always just good to have that little bit of a buffer. But uh, like Terrence said, hopefully he doesn't slip into that fourth round. We wouldn't want him to be on Monroe St. Brown. <laughs> Heaven God. forbid. God yeah, forbid. Oh, that guy God sucks. Yeah, that would be terrible. If that <laughs> what kind of I, I like the I like this 2-7 pick from Matt here. What kind of capital does Hooker have to get to get it? I, I think by the time we're all said and done, Hooker's going to be in the 112 to 2 1 spots pretty much locked in. He's a first round pick. Um and if he goes like some maybe somebody wants the fifth the fifth year option on him and later in the draft and maybe he makes a first round pick, but I don't think he's getting out of the second round. 
Um, and there's some certainly interesting spots there. And if you're going to take a quarterback in the second round, you might as well just take him in the first. You take you him know? at 112. What, so what are, what are you guys' in the general, NFL draft. general thoughts it, on on Hooker and the value? Look, look if, if Hooker – well, that's great value for him um, where, where he was drafted as a mock draft. But if Hooker goes – and I'm going to say it here. If Hooker goes in the first round, he's my, he's my QB1, period. Whoa. He won the first round. Whoa. He's my QB one. Oh wow! Really, a big jump there from from Terrence, like yeah. over over Young and Stroud. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Easy. Anybody? I guarantee you, he's gonna he's gonna get more fantasy points than them. I guarantee you. I don't. The think only one that would would be able to challenge him would be Richardson when it comes to fantasy points. I think there's going to be a hotter take uh, on Hooker here. Uh, JB. Well, Hooker's going to have to sit for a minute, and we're going to see Stroud and, and Young well, I don't for care sure. about sitting. Yeah. I care about when he get on the field yeah. and play. How much? And I guarantee you, Hooker, Hooker is going to get all the hookers cheering for him. <laughs> Sex workers. <laughs> is is ever, anybody disagree with him moving up, uh, you know, probably 2-1-ish? late one by the time we're in actual rookie draft season if he goes in the first round of the nfl draft that that's fine uh but if for me if he slips to the second and you could sit there and say well if he goes early second what does that look like but i mean we play this game all the time with with draft capital with quarterbacks and sure there's plenty of first round quarterbacks that fail but when it comes down to it one, the NFL does typically they don't draft second round. There aren't quarterbacks. second round quarterbacks. They that just take sample, them in the first. That sample is extremely small. You Jaylen look Hurts. at it from, from 2017 to 2022. It's Jalen Hurts, Drew Locke, Deshaun Kaiser, Kyle Trask. And well, we see how that list is shaping up outside of Jalen Hurts. So overall, the NFL they don't they don't go with second round quarterbacks. But I'd. I don't know. I'd be surprised if he goes first, but I don't want to get yelled at by Terrence. So <laughs> I, 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 just, in the first. I just, I really think is there, is there a way, I, I, is, I think, is there, I think a, you're right, Mitch. Is there a way that if hooker gets first round draft capital, he could overtake Levis? What? I think for some people, it actually, I, could I, happen. Th- yeah, I think that's a very so real possibility. much hate yeah. for Levis out there. There's not hate for hooker. I could actually see that happening in okay. drafts. If if Hooker's not hurt going into this year, he's certainly going to be a first round pick. So you know, I just they say he they, crushed the interviews well, at the combine. Well, they said he's ready by training camp. So that was the report I read within the last couple of days of ready by training camp. But even if he doesn't, like those those couple of you know the the if the Falcons take him, I'm fucking interested. If the Tennessee Titans take him, I'm I'm real interested. There's a there's the Seahawks. There's a Vikings. bunch. There's a bunch of teams at the top of the second round who may miss out on those couple of quarterbacks, and they're kind of in a bridge situation ish. Washington. If, if they all take any of them, take them. I'm so freaking interested. Or any of those teams trading up from the that you know Atlanta trading up from two eight up up into whoever has one of those you know Chiefs or whoever. Uh, and, and trying to get Chiefs in there, took him? grab Hooker because Mahomes got hurt, you know, and uh, and get that fifth year contract that you can, you know, navigate there, which is, you know, definitely can come in handy here. If you're the Eagles right now, you wish you wish you could exercise an extra year on Hurts. Any oh, let's let's talk about Sean Tucker here. So fall from grace, fall out of the first round. Obviously, you passed on him once to take Hyatt. Uh, so I don't like the way you said Hyatt. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what uh, What are your thoughts on? Why'd you let him fall so far, JB? I I don't think he's gonna get the draft capital. The more I, the more you hear about it, uh, and now he wasn't medically cleared. Yeah. Uh, the, that report that came was out. News so to was, me. I thought he just didn't do it. So what was going on there? And uh, you know. You know, hopefully everything's okay. Um, well, apparently it is. Apparently he has got a RAS score in the 99th percentile. I, I mean, yeah. So there's still some positive he- here. He has the speed. Is that 4-3-3-40 that he put out there, is it legit? I don't know. But he's still, he's a track he's fast. star. fast. Yeah, he is he, a track star. He, he, he's fast. So I still think he's sub 4-4, four, four, heavily involved in the passing game throughout his collegiate career. 11% reception market share on average, 16% in his best season. With what he had to work with, he was efficient compared to the other guys on his team. Uh, but still struggled at times behind that Syracuse line. 
finds the end zone, uh, even at, you know, 5'9", 207, the measurements overall are fine. I know some people, they were, there were guesses that he was going to be like 195, yeah. that people said he looked thin. Uh, he can handle the workload. He can work on third down. He's not necessarily dynamic, but he's reliable. And a big knock is going to be pass protection. But I just – I'm getting this awful feeling in my stomach. You're looking at all these mocks from people that have a little bit more NFL insight, and that's going to be a concern for me. So if we're talking about safety overall in terms of guys that I think at least get day two draft capital – at the running back position, Bijan, Gibbs, Charbonnet, A Chain, and then I think there's a better chance that Spears, Evans, and Chase Brown actually slip in to the back of the third, as yeah. opposed to Sean Tucker, and that leaves out my guy Tank Bigsby too, yeah. which kills me. It's okay, Jay. You can draft running backs that went in the fourth round. It's all uh, right. I, I, I can't. <laughs> No, no, no. It's but, okay but, with JV. Like he's a fucking therapist. You just get better I, value on him. That's the only way to look at it. I was just going to say, but we're not going to take him in our previous spot of where I took yeah, him at 111. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're talking about 210. Great. That's fine. Yeah. But I think just like you said, Case, to start the show, it, it really speaks to the depth of the class up to this point. Sean Tucker, and we talked about this, I think it was on the last guest spot we did with you guys, that you get past that, that 111, 112, there's about a 10, 12 spot difference where you put him in any which order you want. I, I could kind of see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, and, and like you said, we'll get the last piece of the puzzle here in a few weeks, but Sean Tucker, I, I mean, I, I, I hope the NFL likes him and uh, you know, a lot better than that film that he produced because that, that was a piece of work there. So <laughs> let's get third, third uh, run draft capital, please. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think I think that's a good way to go with the discussion here to you know see how long it takes and where it ends up. But you know, it seems like Gibbs, Charbonnet, Bijan obviously are the, kind of the top three running backs. Where where do you guys stand on kind of the next couple? Because for me, it does seem like the next piece of the puzzle is what's going to help sort some of this out. I know I have guys that I like, but I have a big cluster here. It's it's Evans, it's A Chain, it's Spears, it's Miller, it's Tucker. Uh, it's, no Roshan. It's, it's Chase. It's Chase Brown. Um, I don't know Not that Roshan. I have. I don't know that I have Roshan in there. So we can we can take a quick pause from that real quick and let's shift over to Roshan real quick. Why why the Roshan at two one? Because I absolutely loved his film. His film was fantastic for me. He you was, sure you weren't watching the other guy? <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Yes, I'm very. What's sure. so good about him? So I think that I think he's uh, again he's getting overshadowed because Bijan Bijan is the best. He's not the best running back process we've seen since Barkley. He's the best running back process prospect we've seen since Peterson. He's better than Barkley, uh, unequivocally better. Than this Barkley. guy, yeah, better than Barkley. Woo, gets a chubby just saying the word Barkley. That's so gonna, uh, that yeah. has to be your team name this year. Better than Barkley. Better than Barkley. Yeah. <laughs> Barkley. Woo! But I, I mean, I, you turn on the Roshan shape, and uh, again, again, it's just you're gonna. It's I'm gonna I'm gonna get clowned for this. This is a process from you pick about what kind of running back that I'm looking for. This is the same. This is the same kind of pick area I was taking Algier in last year, and I feel like that paid off for me. So I think it's kind of to me, Roshan Johnson is what is a better version of Brian Robinson, who is the who may be the best pass blocking prospect I've ever scouted. Um, he can work in the pass game. His numbers aren't there, but he he was also sharing again. He's sharing the backfield with a general with a with the uh, the generational talent that we get every year. So apparently we have generational talents every year. Um, <laughs> the boys figured out how to fucking come out super yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, out of the womb. I don't know what they're feeding these kids these days, but goddamn, they are just yeah. It is, but it, they are though. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people get mad at these generational talents. Like they just keep churning them out. Yeah. But again, it's for me of what I'm seeing with my eyes, and that's that's where I have him. I have him as my RB four, so I'm gonna take him as my RB four based on based on this. I was deciding between him and Kincaid. If he, if you want my process there, that's where I was deciding between was between Roshan and Kincaid. So does anybody have Roshan in that next big jumble of guys that I kind of mentioned, or do you have a different iteration of that jumble of guys? Mitch, you look like you're you're go ahead. <laughs> So my thing is like, <clears throat> for me in the second round of these running backs, I don't trust any of their draft capital right now. I just don't. So if we're doing it this early, for me, the reason why I took A-Chain and why I said he's going to be 
the third running back draft in the NFL because I think you could put him on any NFL team and he works. All he needs is 10 touches. And everyone thinks like, oh, no, 10 touches isn't enough. That's what DeAndre Swift got last year. DeAndre Swift was very good when he was actually on the field. Right. And I think A-Chain is, he's smaller than Swift for sure, but he's that kind of back to where if you give him 10 touches, I think he outscores most of these guys that we're talking about in the second round because he can catch passes. If you play in any leagues that have like kick and punt return, punt return yards you know i just think he's just going to be a smash there at the beginning of the second more so than later in the second one actually took him because i mean you can name a team in the nfl he could be their third down back and there's a lot of other guys i could see actually dropping to the fourth round because other teams just don't like him to where i think a chain is just gonna be locked in this early in the process yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I think that's you, a, you can't disagree. With I that. think that's a sound, uh, logical process right there. So I, you know, certainly can't disagree with that. The size concerns you a little bit of of mm-hmm. you know what what to say or do exactly with him and what the role is going to be. I, I would kind of push back a little bit. I feel like the right any team can draft him and you can plug and play him, but the right team needs to get him for the right usage and the right style of of you know touches. I I think um, Bengals. Bengals, Bengals would be certainly be uh, interesting. Anybody else have any definitive kind of guys that they would see next after Charbonnet here, or do you guys all feel the same way? Like Zach Evans, A Chain Spears, Tucker Miller, uh, Ab- uh, Israel, um, Abana Kanda, Kanda, big fan, big uh, fan of his too. Yeah, yeah. Chase Brown, didn't Ch- get mentioned. Chase Brown, we for do sure. need to get. Uh, I'll at take the very Ch- end. We I'll need take to- Chase Brown over over Sean Tucker all day <coughs> long. Um, I like, really, I really like what Chase. I'm having a hard time between Chase Brown, Con- uh, Miller, and uh, Abana Kanda. I, I think those guys are going to be. If any one of those guys gets that second round draft capital, I no problem shooting those guys up at the top. I took Evans there. Mostly as it's not about really the name. It's more about the color of the square for me at that point. It's green. It's a running back. I want to take a running back there. I'm interested in a bunch of these running backs. And I think it'll kind of, you know, the story will get told a little bit once the draft happens of of which ones will kind of be in there. And then you kind of go back to the drawing board and figure out which one separates themselves uh, from you now that you kind of know a little bit more. Now, you don't have to get upset if they're a fourth-round pick. You can still like – like I like Tank Bigsby a lot too. I'm just – you know, he can't be in this discussion, I don't think, right now because it does seem like he is already in the low man on the totem pole as far as, you know, where the draft capital is going to be. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't really have any problems taking Evans. Weird situation coming into the combine. He was a little light, and you don't like that – you don't like to see that, but – He's what the the tape is is phenomenal on Evans too. I, I really like what he put down as a runner, um, averaging like six point eight career yards per carry. Um, you can go w- watch a whole Evans video to kind of me explaining the transfer and the the all, all that kind of stuff. I don't necessarily view it as a, as a terrible negative. I mean, one of the guys we're talking about, Miller, could easily go over him in the draft, and if if Judkins was in the draft right now, he'd probably go over both of those guys. Um, Twenty twenty five RB two. So. Um, At 25 class, though. Any any more in, further insight on the next batch of running backs? Yeah, here? Terrence, who you got after Charbonnet? Oh, I mean, I, I, I thought I was going to finally, you know, get to give my rant. Go ahead. Go for oh, it. Roshan. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Take it back, maybe. I, I thought I touched on this. Uh, Talk last about how time. he broke his hand at the you senior know, bowl. Um, you know, no. Um, well, I touched on him a little bit, a little bit because – there's one major dynasty network that keep pushing this guy. And, it, and they're pushing the oddest players. They're pushing Will Levis and Roshan Johnson. And it's, it, 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 it's frustrating me. I don't. Somebody you know, has to. It's, it's really frustrating me, you know, <laughs> that you're going to hang your hat on those two players. Weird. But uh, Ro- Roshan uh, Johnson. Um, so. On the same network, I heard them say, "Yeah, you know, for the running back three, we really is is Charbonnet versus Roshan Johnson." And I lost lost my mind when I heard that. It, 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 how is that even a conversation? You know, um, this man is a backup. He probably <laughs> get drafted in the NFL as a backup. We hope you you. The only way in first, I'm gonna say I don't dislike. I don't, I don't, I don't dislike, dislike his film, 
I don't dislike him as a prospect. He just is a lot of marks he didn't hit because he didn't start. So he got the size. Give you that. He don't have the production. He doesn't have the athleticism. We 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 saw that at the combine, you know. And now the third or uh, the fourth, we need to find out if he's going to have the draft capital. So if this man is drafted in you know fourth round or lower, I don't I don't uh, or higher, I don't I don't want him, you know. So uh, if he gets third round like Brian Robinson. Why not? You know, if somebody drafted him, if he get drafted high in the fourth round and maybe going to be someone's number one running back like Pierce kind of situation Pierce got in, maybe I invested him. But I'm not I'm not trying to project what a backup did that didn't have any production. And in the NFL, when it, we have people that have had the production, this draft is full of running backs that have had the production that got the talent. Why are you going to pick a backup? I don't, I, it, it blows my mind if a team does do that. And I don't understand the people that's touting them so high, calling them, a, he should be number running back number three. That is crazy. The, the but, only thing that you can say about that is that the, you know, those, what you have, the, the reason to pay attention to those guys is because those guys are getting information from, you know, the people who are actually going to pull these triggers. So there must be, some intrigue in the league with with Roshan that they keep hearing about. I would assume they also give Dwayne McBride a whole lot of love as well. I can't wait to see it. Um, <laughs> McBride, McBride. I mean, what passes he's gonna catch? He's going He's going It's. I can't see him getting. You know, first, second, third round draft capital. So he's gonna be a. He's gonna be a good running back. Um, come in. You know. Um, Kuiper loves himself. So give, McBride. Give, give you no no passing. No, no pass, catch, no passes. Yeah. So, yeah, he's going to be a good backup. Good backup. <laughs> All right, boys. Um, so, we, wait, wait, Terrence, real quick. I, I, I need to have a rebuttal here. So, so Dave Grohl wasn't a good, wasn't a good front man because he was a drummer for Nirvana. You do know, I'm black. <laughs> you, you didn't break up a hip hop reference. Break up a hip hop reference, please. Jimi Hendrix was black. He played rock and roll. Was, bring up my hip hop reference. Was, was, I'm, I'm not stereotyping. Hood. Was Bell I'm Biv stereotyping? Did Bell <laughs> did, was was it new was Bell Biv did Bell like the backup people in new edition and they came out and crushed it with poison? Would that be kind of a similar? They sure did. Yeah. So, would that that'd be so a kind of did. Did. Not to go be a singer? <laughs> no, but I'm just saying, I'm just making a correlation here. I'm just saying, just that because girl is he's poison. a backup. And also, you're talking about fourth round draft capital. We had two running backs last year who both, I wouldn't say crush, but both who had good seasons as fourth round running backs last year. One of them rushed for over a thousand yards and one of them came very close. So I don't know why we're poo-pooing fourth round draft capital for well, the running back. Because the percentage is... Yeah, John, how draft come you hate all fourth round running backs? If you can't hate all fourth round running backs... Yeah, but they're not dead. You know, you know that they're gonna become backups. If they draft somebody in the second round, they're backup just that quick. There are outliers, which I'm all for. And I'm just, and I'm, just and I'm not, I'm not willing to probably just poo-poo outliers. A, I'm not just willing and, to poo-poo a player and, because and, of and, a and running back not, draft capital. And last year, let's be honest, this is like the deepest uh, running back class been for a while. No, I agree with that. A lot I agree of with that. So, these so then, so therefore, fourth round running back should be good because the class is deeper. What do you got so, on the percentage over there, John, on the fourth rounders? I know you look, seem like you're just eager beaver over there to tell us some negativity. I, I am an eager beaver here, and Matt <laughs> and I are clashing here. Listen, I, it's not that you know we, we say okay, I I don't want them to land in the fourth round of the NFL draft. We want them to get that at least day two draft capital. I'm not saying I mean I took Sean Tucker here at the back end of the second, even with the expectation he lands in the fourth. But think about what Damian Pierce did in from a production standpoint here and in 2022. Think about what Tyler Algier did with I the think fifth about it every draft. night before I go to bed. I bet you do, Matt. I bet you do. So when you when you when when you tuck yourself in late at night and you have the the fan going or the air conditioner on because I like to be cold. Oh yeah, sleep, fans okay? gotta be. Oh my fan has a day off since I moved into the house. And you're tucked in under your blanket. These are guys that had to put up very solid numbers as rookies just to even sniff to maintain the what 
What's their value right now on the market within the, the dynasty the community? Form. It's like I you can't, can't get a first for them. And that's why I wasn't setting a first for Damian Pierce, oh, if you guys geez. recall. Oh, jeez. back. You were right. awfully sweaty middle of the season about a first split yeah. for him. Uh, <laughs> never, never. But, but, but that's the point here. So you need these guys to come in with that low draft capital. Hell, we even saw it with Amon Ross St. Brown from a wide receiver perspective. He is still disrespected after doing what he's done for two years because they had that stigma. So when we're talking about these running backs, they better go out and they better show out in the fourth round. But hell, Michael Carter had a productive rookie season. What's he doing? He, he's cleaning up after Zonovan Knight now as the backup. No, they, Bam! They, they, they love, that's the example. They that's love, what I was looking for. They love that's who I was looking these for. negative Nellies of running backs. Love that Michael Carter one. That's just they love throwing that one around. <laughs> <laughs> he was dead. So as soon as the breeze came down, dead. <laughs> Well, you can never trust a big butt and a smile. That's all I know. <laughs> Is that Michael Carter? No, that's Bell Bib or that's a, yeah, that's <laughs> Bell Bib DeVoe. Yeah. <laughs> that was Michael Turner. That was mm. Michael Turner. That boy had a that boy had a caboose on him. That thing has, <laughs> he had some trunks. Yeah. All right. Anybody got anything else to wrap this up? Any any likes, dislikes? Who should have been who should have been, who in, the have been in the second round that wasn't? Besides a band of Canada, and Chase, Chase Brown, Brown, Brown and a band of Canada are for me are, are two guys Rasheed who could Rice. easily be at the top of this list in the second yeah. round of running backs. Yeah, I just need the draft capital for him because you know I love me some a band of Canada, but I just need the the capital. I think he's going to be overdrafted. I honestly do. Mm. Um, at, at cost, gonna... give me give me a player like Evan Hall at the back end of the third of rookie drafts over. Wherever Izzy Abanacanda is going to be going, because it's going to be far oh, too wow, high. No. But, but can, I, can I say one thing though? Come on, no. I really, come on. I really said enough tonight. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you guys are like, can you please start coughing again so you can go on mute? Uh, Who's that vomit thing, bucket? I know, seriously. So one thing I do want to say, um, you look at these second round rookie picks that we have, and we're talking about it today on March 22nd with how deep it is. And now we're talking about guys that should have been taken in the second to even uh, further show how deep this class is. Once we get draft capital, once we get landing spots, that pool of talent, <laughs> not talent, but of depth, it, it's not going to be nearly as deep once we start to get those other pieces of the puzzle. And this happens every year. So what I've been doing in previous years, and it's worked out well, you find those tier breaks that you have right now, and it could be at the end of the first getting up into the 106, 107. It could be end of the second getting up into the 205, 206. But I think looking to package up some of these picks with maybe some depth pieces on your roster or multiple picks and moving up now, being proactive, doing it before the NFL draft, because things are going to start to get uh, a little bit dicier. Uh, especially we talk about the depth of the running backs here and Matt, you hit the nail on the head that because of the depth of this class, we're going to see more guys go in the fourth and fifth round, but it's going to impact the value of the rookie pick. So I would say be proactive, get out ahead of it because, you know, especially if you, I have a few leagues where I just have a shit ton of picks. I'm going to be looking to, to move those in tier well, those 23 tankers. Huh? How'd that work out for you? Idiot. <laughs> Some of them are Okay. <laughs> Uh, some of them we don't talk about those. They're like Bruno. <laughs> I, I think yeah. I think you should just fucking take swings because we like all these guys. We're saying that it's deep. It's not like we're like we've all been doing this a while. And and if they they can't all get drafted early, right? Like they can't. And it, from what I hear from the big draft analysts is that this isn't a good class overall. You know, there's only they have, I've only got 15 guys with a first round grade. Blah blah blah. Other last year's third rounders could be first rounders this year and shit like that. Uh, it's gonna push the skill position players up a little bit, but I do like there is a bunch of depth and like I don't think you should like I'm the more and more we talk about all this shit, the more excited I'm getting about my third round picks. Like when they just take a bunch of swings. You know but that's to that's today before we get some of these ugly landings. I don't I care. I, I, think, I don't give uh, a fuck. Yeah. I think he's gonna take some swings. It's gonna push these guys down into the third round. I'm gonna get guys that I like because they had bad draft capital or bad landing spot, and I like them. Like that's where we get our Elijah Mitchells and our Amon Ross St. Browns and like the guys that we like that 
are outliers, but we like them. Like, just go with your process. You like this man? He didn't. They fuck it up all the time in the NFL. Take what? What is a third round pick? What are you gonna do with that anyway? Fucking take a swing. Take swings. But I'm not. I'm not talking about a third round pick though. I'm talking about moving up from the the second, the back into the second, getting up into the early uh, mid second. I'm more late for moving first, up. up sure. And, yeah. I'm not talking. To, I, I love my third round picks. Take them. I love them. I sell Swing all my third round picks. <laughs> sell guys. every single one of them. I, I'm, I'm, naming, I'm, I'm, I, I'm naming my next kid third round pick Bauer. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is, is, is that hyphenated or third is the first name? First name. Is okay. that would that be your third kid? It would be actually. Oh, Don't do it. Perfect. Don't do it. This what, isn't an announcement or anything. What kind of a maniac <laughs> would have three? Oh man! Don't do it, man. Mitch, do you have some some discourse on me? There Mitch has been not saying much, but he's been yeah. saying everything with his eyes and his. his I've face. been just thinking. So I got. So uh, this is going to come off as a hot take, but I really don't think it's going to be six months from now. Um, Darnell Washington is going to end up being yeah. worth more than Dalton Kincaid by October of this year. Because I like it. My big reason why is Darnell Washington is going to be a day one starter for whatever team is drafted him. He is a great blocker. They're going to immediately put him on the field and he's going to get work. Don Kincaid, every single person that you talk to that watches him knows he's great at receiving. He's amazing at receiving, horrible at blocking. So he's going to be a part. Horrible at blocking. He he, he can't. He can block on the perimeter. He's not a great pass blocker, but he's better on the perimeter. Yes, agreed. He he pass blocked against Pac-12 players. We, We have to like... How many like, pass rushers do we see come from the Pac-12? Again, Mike, Mike, again though, why, why this is this is a problem? I, I think in general, like, why are you drafting him to do that? You need to be well, drafting Dalton Kincaid with the idea of this is how we're going to play Dalton Kincaid. Like Gasecki was being played on the Dolphins mm-hmm. before the last regime came in. You know, I, that's kind of. But I, uh, you know, I, I don't disagree. Right. I mean, but it's how many of these receiving tight ends we see that like this is how they should be used how many of them end up working out oh. and that's like the thing for me is so are you saying that are you saying that K- Dalton Kincaid is Jay Sternberger basically no oh, because he was a, he, he's going to be a first round pick Dalton's but playing, I'm saying so. the same yeah. type of player right because Jay so Sternberger my, couldn't block the wind so forever in dynasty we always said you don't draft tight ends in rookie drafts you buy them the next year because they're always cheaper I think Kincaid is going to be the perfect example of it this year he's just I don't think he's going to do enough to hold his value to where someone like Darnell Washington could actually end up exceeding value where we're getting him. I mean, if he goes in the third round of rookie drafts, it's yeah, absolute. He, he won't, I think, just solely because he seemingly will. They're talking about potentially three tight ends in the first round. So yeah. once that happens yeah. and people get hip to that, he'll he'll, he'll shoot. Uh, I mean, I don't know that Hayden Hurst necessarily did, but Hayden Hurst also wasn't the. Uh, he was also 20. He was also filing for AARP at that uh, point as well, exactly. too. <laughs> My concern with Darnell Washington now this is now this is not a comp so this is just what I'm saying is my concern is to him is he is he is what now what Mo Ali Cox is where you're trying to project him as a pass catcher because he's such a good blocker so that is he ever going to get out okay. of that pass blocking like that pass blocking fit for him where he can where he can truly develop as a pass catcher so that's my that's my concern with Washington and, and a lot of this. With with tight ends is like, what's the quarterback like? Do they like their tight end? You know, what's the scheme the, 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 has the guy, the, the quarterback back in college was he thrown to the tight end? Is he is he down? Right? Is the scheme scheme in the tight end? Uh, you know, it's so many factors that go into it. But I'm I'm 100 percent with you, Mitch. Like it's tough. I didn't really want to take Kincaid. I just didn't know who else to take in his tight end premium, and I think his value will probably be pretty strong i could probably move it before the season even starts if i really wanted to i i i'm, I'm usually not trying to take a tight end in a rookie draft because it's just unless it's kyle pitts or fryer but fryer was going at the back end of the second round even when he was taken right but that is a good example of what rookie tight end increased their value after one year not very many of them right yeah. like and i don't pitts, think and i don't even include pitts in that conversation because he's a wide receiver like like or he should be used as such, and he's a unicorn. No one like he's a, he's an, you know, he doesn't yeah. count in my opinion. I don't but think the thing. The rest of the, them. The thing with Kincaid, like Evan Ingram is the one that comes to mind, and like he had a great rookie season, and then nothing until this past year. Yeah, I don't think with for for me, Mayor and Kincaid aren't getting any higher than where they were taken at here. I just can't take them much higher than that in a rookie draft. Not in a even rookie a draft, premium. but like, like even I think you're going to be able to buy both of them boys cheaper. Like like uh, look at McBride. He showed out. A little bit 
at, there in times at spurts, but I feel still feel like he's cheaper than what he was. Oh, for sure. Mid second, you can by get McBride. Uh, mid second, can you get can you get him for mid second? Like oh, it got sure. to be I, right. I, I yeah. yeah, I think so easily. I doubt it. Yeah, I, I do. Too. I wouldn't see any I reason why you're not getting McBride for a mid second right now. E- e- even in two PPR, I think you can. He would mm. he would be. My, Ain't he no would be way. my tight end two coming out right now. If, if we didn't know anything uh, about him, he'd be my tight end two in this class behind Mayer. But for McBride, uh, Zach Ertz injury, he's as old as Hen and Hooker, and <laughs> he's – I thought that would get a better reaction. <laughs> uh, and – uh, with Jonathan Gannon coming over, how much did you know? Obviously, he's the defensive side, but right. do they bring any of those well, two nuke, tight end nuke philosophies potentially out of there too? So. Right, right. So I think Trey McBride is a yeah. screaming buy. Um, I agree. I've so. been, I've been singing McBride's praises as well. Um, any other players that you guys would have liked to maybe see in this second round, or you think will be in the second round? All righty then. Well, <laughs> what do you got? Well, I like, there's a guy I like, but um, I don't know. I doubt he'd get any of the draft capital. But if some team, you know, did did like him and he got any draft capital, I like A.T. A- Perry, just to let y'all know. Yeah. So, uh, he feels like he's kind of – he's heating up uh, right it's now. lingering. Uh, and, and, and the Twitterverse seems to be that bigger guy with some decent athleticism. Um, Rashi Rice. That's one more. I said his name quickly, but I gotta say it again. That's all right. We like Rice. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind Rice. I like Tillman. Yeah. Tillman. Um, I, I do like Tillman a good bit. I don't. I don't really know that much about Mingo, but the last guy we had on had like Mingo uh, a, a good bit. So I need to check him out. So, but again, Archivius? Yeah. Well, no. The uh, I forget what his first name is. Uh, but Jonathan. Jonathan. We'll we'll have you know we'll, we'll the next rookie draft we do we'll we'll probably either be right before the NFL draft or right after. Um, and we'll have you know this will this landscape will change. Uh, once again, except for and, one one, that's not going to change. Right. And give us give us some answers, but I still think there is going to be some battles at the at at from from two seven on about you know even if it's. A, a day of capital or so, especially between these running backs. Man, to um, me, it starts after. I think it starts after Charbonnet. Yeah, I think that back end of the one eleven forward is pick your is going to be landing spot dependent, and then oh, Zay Flowers player. is in there, so it's one twelve. <laughs> Zay Flowers done deal. He's moving up. He's okay. probably going here, ahead of some here, other wide receivers by the end okay, of the time. Okay. I see you, let, Terrence. Matt, settle down. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me pull some Twitter. Clickbait shit, right. Matt. You said you said um, the, the 101's locked in, and it, it is. But Rich is there any conversation? Is there any conversation if Bijan would go to Seattle with Kenneth Walker? I just don't see that happening. Nah. I just but no, no, no. In this situation, yeah, sure. it did. Then, yeah, then yes, I think there's conversation to happen. The I think weirdest thing ever. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. I'm just. Yeah, I, mean, I just don't want. I just don't want to leave you guys yet. That's all. I'm about to yeah. say, I can't even wrap my head around that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> nah. So, I'll I'll right, sorry, guys. I'll lay out one scenario where me and Big Co have a team. We have the two, the one two, and the one three. Now, would I do a deal to somehow finagle to move one of those picks up? He's got some later first round picks and do some swapping around in there to get the one one to get Bijan. You know, probably. It would have to be the right price, but in this scenario, for what our team is and where we're at, we're not a hundred percent sure if we're gonna how great we're gonna be. And I feel like I can buy older running backs once my team gets competitive in this certain scenario. Like I'm not gonna be pressing super hard to get up to the one one. Um, sure, if you, that makes sense. Sure, you can just take Stroud and Richardson and build around them potentially. Right, I could take. I'm, well, I'll, I'll probably take Richardson and then try to trade back one and, and try to put the pinch on somebody else to move a pickup later. But um, you know, I, I normally I would say a hundred percent try to jump up and get that one one and, and grab Bijan. But just the way this team is and the way the league's kind of structured, um, you know, I, I think I'd almost rather have the fluidity of maybe the two quarterbacks there in that situation rather than trying to grab Bijan and figure my running back position out down the line when I'm a hundred percent sure I'm ready to uh go ahead and make make a couple of runs for a couple of years here. So 
you know, it, just kind of making Bijan a scenario. Bijan seems almost like rebuild uh, agnostic. Like he, sure, you know, like sure, but it's 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 kind of hurting how I can build the rest of my team by taking Bijan because now I don't really want to move him because I took him and I'm excited to have him at a running back slot. But if, if I had two quarterbacks, now I have four quarterbacks on my team and the quarterback landscape is dicey right now. These two guys have a little bit of a shine to them. After the first six, you're saying, who the hell do I like with any upside? After we get into the second round, fuck it, they're all the same. Uh, really, once into the third round of quarterbacks, I think, Mitch, you know, you said that at some point. These guys could actually fetch you some value, rebuild multiple spots on that team, and then be able to go after a running back um, and, and try to lock I mean, those kind of positions down. You could do that with Bijan, too. You just wouldn't want to. Right. Well, what would be the, what would be the point? I guess is, you know, now I got us, you know, I, I, have, I have so much more fluidity in those two quarterbacks than I do just taking Bijan of, of building deals and making deals and, and such, um, you know, anyway, so just creating a scenario where maybe that I wouldn't necessarily say I have to have Bijan if I could get him, uh, which I probably could. So anybody got anything else? Probably go get Bijan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck about your rebuild. I mean, yeah, if you want to move him, you can. I, you certainly can. You certainly you know? can. I know you don't. For as much as one on one, having yeah. trouble. Yeah, having trouble. I, I I got a rebuild team, and I don't need B John, but it's just the one that wants to you know give me the price, right? You know, to pay for it, and I, I'm not saying I'm asking for a lot, but. Yeah, and in, 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 that, in that case, if nobody wants to give me a deal, I'll take Bijan and let him get on the field, and then somebody will eventually want to pay me the king's ransom for him, most likely. Um, I guess his value probably can't ever. I mean, I guess he could be the one. He could be the first non-quarterback taken in in superflex drafts. I mean, that's yeah. about as high as he could go. Well, sure, but I mean, he's already not that far off right now. Yeah. So. But it's not <laughs> right. That's my point. Is like, if you're gonna trade Bijan now, isn't the worst time. You know, before he does take the field and doesn't do what everyone's expecting him to do wow. because of whatever circumstance happens or fucking injury. So I guess if you're trying to rebuild and move Bijan, now's the time. Not no uh, point in holding him. Yeah, you, there's a million different ways to play this uh, game. So anyway, let's I'll wrap up. Take that beautiful butterfly and hold on forever. You see you next. See you in three years. I mean, if I can't figure the rest of the shit out in three years, still have a 24 year old running back ready to go. What am I doing? Yeah, I know. I know you don't understand what I was saying, but it's all right. Um, <laughs> let's get out of here. Uh, let's wrap it up. And we appreciate you guys for joining us. Give me one more round on the way out of, of where we can find everything and, and what you, what hood you're repping. Uh, JB, what you got? Yep. As always, th this is a lot of fun. Enjoy shooting the shit with you guys. Uh, find me on Twitter at The Bauer Club, uh, hosted Dynasty Theory at Dynasty Theory FF on Twitter and Instagram. Like I said earlier, we got the Discord, we got the Patreon, we got a lot of, uh, we're doing an uh, NFL draft party for the first two nights. We're, what else are we doing? I'm Mitch? a Patreon, so you better invite me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be in Discord. So we actually us. have to do separate rooms because discord will only allow so many people so we're gonna have like two or three rooms going look at you guys yep well i want anyway, to be in the main um, room uh you'll, you'll be right the, next i to want me, to be in the champagne be, room you'll be right next to me uh so yeah uh, but again thank you for having me on this was a blast you guys are the yep. best mitch what did you i'm got? just at dino mc and everything that john said all right and uh big t what you got for me dog <laughs> of course, I'm in them Twitter, the Twitter streets. That one fantasy guy, the number one, you know, that fantasy network also on YouTube. Battle him, go find him. He he's yeah. ready. He said he wants all the smoke. Yeah, bring all your Roshan takes directly to him. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. If, if y'all <laughs> want to debate with me about Will Levis mm. and Roshan Johnson. Please find me on Twitter. <laughs> Let's get it popping. Let's do it. All hey, right. Can't thank y'all boys enough for joining us. This is a lot of fun. Appreciate you guys for listening. Uh, if you're on the YouTube channel, you definitely got to hit subscribe by now. And on the podcast, go to the iTunes, or the uh, Spotify, and just tap the whole five stars. Just tap it for your pleasure. Appreciate y'all. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>